In a small town on the outskirts of America, where everyone knew each other, something strange happened. It was a place where life flowed steadily and calmly, and each day was similar to the previous one. But one evening changed everything. Jack, an ordinary guy who loved to walk at night, decided to take a stroll through the old park. This park had been abandoned for many years, and no one went there. People said that something sinister lived there, but Jack didn't believe in those tales. He thought they were just made-up stories to scare children. The moon shone brightly, illuminating Jack's path. He walked along the trail, listening to the wind whispering in the treetops. Suddenly, he heard a strange sound. It was something between a whisper and a growl. Jack stopped, listening. The sound came from deep within the park. He decided to follow the sound, thinking it might just be an animal. But the closer he got, the more his anxiety grew. His heart began to beat faster, and he felt a chill run down his spine. Suddenly, he saw something strange. In the center of the park stood an old well, which Jack had never heard of. The well was surrounded by thick bushes and looked as if no one had touched it for many years. But the strangest thing was that the sound was coming from the well. Jack approached cautiously, trying not to make a sound. He looked inside and saw that the well was deep and dark. Suddenly, a hand emerged from the depths. It was pale and bony, and it looked like it belonged to someone who had been dead for a long time. Jack recoiled but didn't have time to run. The hand grabbed him by the neck and pulled him down. He tried to break free, but the force was too strong. He felt himself being dragged into the depths of the well, and it grew darker and colder around him. When he came to, he found himself in a strange place. It was a room dimly lit. Around him stood ancient objects, and everything looked as if it hadn't been touched for hundreds of years. In the corner of the room sat a figure. It was dressed in old-fashioned clothes and stared at Jack with empty eyes. You have come, the figure said. Its voice was cold and lifeless. You are now one of us. Jack tried to understand what was happening, but his thoughts were confused. He felt his body beginning to change. His skin was turning pale, and his eyes were becoming empty. He realized that he was now also part of this cursed place. Since then, people in the town started noticing strange things. At night, they heard whispers and saw shadows moving in the darkness. They said that Jack had become one of the ghosts that inhabited the old park, and anyone who dared to go there never returned. Thus, the park became even more abandoned, and people tried to avoid it. But sometimes, on quiet nights, one could hear a whisper coming from the depths of the park. It was the whisper of those who had forever remained in this cursed place. In a small town in the south of America, where everyone lived quietly and peacefully, there stood an old house. This house was known as the House on the Hill. No one knew exactly when it was built, but it was said to have been standing there for hundreds of years. People avoided this place because there were rumors that the house was cursed. One evening, Michael, a guy who loved adventures, decided to explore this house. He had always been curious about what lay behind its old walls. He took a flashlight with him and set off. The night was dark, and the moon barely lit the way. When Michael approached the house, he felt his heart beat faster. The house looked sinister, its windows were broken, and the doors creaked in the wind. He opened the door and went inside. Inside, it was dark and cold. The flashlight illuminated only a small part of the room, and Michael felt fear beginning to take hold of him. He started exploring the house, moving from room to room. Everywhere there were old, dusty things left by the previous owners. In one of the rooms, he found an old diary. He opened it and began to read. The diary belonged to a girl named Emily, who had lived in this house many years ago. Emily wrote about strange things that happened in the house. She talked about shadows that moved at night and voices she heard in the dark.
She wrote that the house was cursed and that its inhabitants were doomed to eternal suffering. Michael continued reading, and his fear grew. Suddenly, he heard a whisper. He turned around but saw no one. The whisper grew louder, and Michael realized it was coming from the basement. He gathered all his courage and went to the basement. The door was closed, but he managed to open it. The basement was even darker and colder. Michael descended the stairs and saw that the basement was filled with old things. In the corner of the basement, he noticed something strange. It was an old doll that looked like it had been made many years ago. The doll was dressed in an old-fashioned dress, and its eyes seemed to follow Michael. He approached and picked up the doll. Suddenly, the doll began to speak. Its voice was quiet and sinister. You shouldn't have come here, it said. Now you will also become part of this house. Michael felt his body begin to grow cold. He tried to run out of the basement, but his legs wouldn't obey. He fell to the floor, and his consciousness began to fade. The last thing he heard was the doll's laughter. The next day, people noticed that Michael had disappeared. No one had seen him since the night he went to the house on the hill. The town was once again plunged into fear. People said that the house had claimed another victim and that no one should go there. Since then, the house stood even more abandoned and sinister. And everyone who passed by felt the cold wind whispering in their ear, Don't come here, or you will also become part of this cursed place. In the small town of Hartford, Connecticut, there stood an old abandoned hospital known to the locals as St. Mary's. This hospital had been closed many years ago after a series of unexplained deaths of patients and staff. Since then, it had stood empty, surrounded by rumors and legends. One evening, a group of thrill-seeking teenagers decided to explore St. Mary's. Among them was Tom, who was always the leader of their group. He was convinced that all these stories were just made up and wanted to prove it to his friends. They took flashlights with them and set off. When they approached the hospital, it looked even more sinister than they had imagined. The windows were boarded up, and the doors were covered with rust. But Tom didn't let fear take over and opened the main door. Inside, it was dark and cold, and the air was filled with the smell of mold and decay. They began to explore the building moving through the corridors and rooms. Everywhere, old medical instruments, beds, and documents were scattered around. Old photographs of doctors and nurses who once worked their home on the walls. Tom noticed that some of them had crosses marked on them. When they reached the operating room, they heard a strange sound. It was a quiet whisper coming from the depths of the room. Despite his friend's protests, Tom decided to follow the sound. In the corner of the operating room, he found an old door that led to the basement. The basement was even darker and colder. They descended the stairs and found themselves in a long corridor, dimly lit. Old lamps hung on the walls, flickering and making strange noises. Suddenly, they heard footsteps. They were heavy, slow steps approaching them. Tom and his friends froze, not knowing what to do. Suddenly, a figure appeared from the darkness. It was an old doctor, dressed in a white coat covered in blood. His face was twisted in horror, and his eyes stared directly at them. You shouldn't be here, he said in a quiet but sinister voice. Leave before it's too late. But Tom didn't listen. He decided to find out what was going on. They continued down the corridor and reached a room that was locked. Tom found an old key and opened the door. Inside was a small room filled with old medical records and photographs. On one of the photographs, he recognized the doctor they had seen in the corridor. They began reading the records and learned that experiments had been conducted on patients in the hospital. The doctor they saw was one of those who conducted these experiments. But something went wrong, and they all died a horrible death. Since then, their souls had remained in the hospital, doomed to eternal suffering.
Suddenly, the doors of the room slammed shut, and the light went out. They were plunged into complete darkness. Whispers and screams began to echo around them. Tom felt someone grab his hand. He tried to break free, but the force was too strong. His friend screamed and tried to find a way out. But the doors wouldn't open. When the light came back on, Tom and his friends had disappeared. No one in Hartford ever saw them again. The town was once again plunged into fear, and people avoided St. Mary's. They said that the souls of those who died in the hospital continued to seek new victims, and anyone who dared to go there never returned.